Former Labour, Labour leader David Cunliffe spent nearly 20 years in Parliament, but he left politics altogether in 2017. Nowadays, he's immersed in the corporate world, a partner at Stakeholders Strategies in Auckland, but he knows these politicians well. He worked for them with them for years. So what does he think of Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern's reshuffle? He joins me now from our Wellington studio. Good evening, David. Good evening, Lisa. Let's start with housing, because that's the big ticket item. So what do you think, well, does Megan Woods have something that means she's more likely to succeed where Phil Twyford has failed? I think you've just run a clip where the Prime Minister's uh, told it pretty much like it is. Um, This is not about an individual failing, it's about a job being too big for any one person. I think it's fair to say that Megan Woods has uh, learned some particular skills from her experience in the Christchurch uh, rebuild, build from the rubble up. Um, she's brought people together across the private sector, the construction sector, the public sector, local government, central government, and she'll bring that experience to the housing portfolio. But I think this is a transition from uh, policy design you do in opposition and sell in your early days in government to the hard yards of delivery. And Megan Woods is very good at that. She will, I think, be a very effective team leader uh, for that expanded team. Is it the Prime Minister's mistake not realising that housing was too big a portfolio for just one minister? Well, of course, he had transport as well and retains transport. And just in passing to note that he's picked up another very senior portfolio in economic development. But back to your question. um, Look, it's easy in uh, before you confront the hard realities of a complex problem to underestimate just how difficult it is. And and let's also remember this is not a new issue. The previous government, I think it's fair to say, knew from at least the middle of their term that the housing crisis was getting worse. They didn't do anything about it. They didn't campaign on it. They didn't act on it. And it is now a real world scale uh, crisis and it's a crisis because the market is not functioning well, the, the contracting system's not working too well in the, the private sector, risk gets passed to the subbies, um, there's been some screws tightened on that which has meant that large companies like Fletcher Buildings have had issues in the marketplace. There's a skills shortage in the construction sector that's holding the sector back and I don't think the depth of all of that was foreseeable for a government before it took office. Now they're confronted with just how hard it is, and they're throwing more resource at it on a meritocratic basis. I, I don't think they can be criticised for that. Hey, you would have been there when all of these conversations were happening around Kiwi Build, and word was that Kiwi Build started out with thinking, well, 50,000 houses would be enough, but it ended up at, a, at 100,000. So, do you think being over ambitious has kind of kneecapped this government, and that perhaps they should have been a bit more realistic with their targets? Well, it is about delivery, I agree with you, and the Prime Minister said that herself. This is the year of delivery. She's rejigging her team to put the people who've proven that they can deliver out there in the real world uh, up the ladder because uh, they will need to drive change. And Megan Woods, in the clip you just played, said, look, it didn't work. We're going to change it. She's going to take a couple of weeks uh, to get her bearings in the new portfolio. That was indicative of her, her style. She is very clear, very direct. She will lead that team in a very no-nonsense and I think very business-like way while being able to talk across the divide of public-private sector, just as Chris Farfoy has proved that he is able to do. If she is unable, Megan Woods, I mean, if she's unable to meet the targets... Does that mean that the policy is flawed in some way then? If you give it to a second minister and they can't do it either, is it then the policy is just not achievable? I think it's too early to um, you know, put a label on it. Clearly they, the government has found headwinds in implementation. Um, this is a, you know, a really tough job to do, but it's a little too early for the jury to come back and say it's a failure or a success. So what how I long think do you reckon clear, you have what, to give it? How long do you reckon you have to give it? Well, I think... It, subtly put in the language of the Prime Minister's statement uh, was a shift of language away from the focus on Kiwi build as the first layer 
word to housing as the first layer word, of which Kiwi Build is now one of three key parts. But do Kiwi you do Build, that which, though? Don't you shift your language like that because you're going, you're trying to minimise what you haven't managed to do. You're trying to well, spread the a, load and and offer a distraction. Some would argue. Lisa, that's a political lens. I'm trying yeah. to put a practical lens on this, uh, not for political reasons. I'm not here to apologise for a government no. or otherwise. What I'm what I'm saying is the government or New Zealanders don't have enough good houses. They don't have enough warm, dry houses. Homelessness is in shocking proportions in our cities. And I was spent yesterday up in in Kaikoui. I can tell you the housing's not flash up in the far north either. We have to get moving on this. Now, Kiwi Build itself is basically a scheme to make it easier for first home buyers to get into the market. Many of our poorest New Zealanders, the people who are most vulnerable, aren't in the position to be first home buyers, so Kiwi Build isn't going to solve their problem. That's why the government is re-gearing to put more emphasis on social housing. That's why it's brought Chris Farfoy into that role. That's why Megan Woods is not the Minister of Kiwi Build. She's the Minister of Housing, and she will drive that team hard to deliver more appropriate houses for people who need it most. Kiwi Build will will be a part of it, and they haven't announced any of this yet, but if I'm a betting man, what I suspect is there'll be less emphasis on the total Kiwi Build target and more emphasis on the total housing target. And that will be a mix of Kiwi build, community housing, state housing, and possibly leveraging up the local government sector just like we used to. Mm. Hey, just a couple of quick things that we can rip through. Anyone in there that you think should have got a boost today and didn't get it? Look, honestly, I thought um, the lineup uh, was a pretty far reaching and pretty meritocratic lineup. I'm not going to play sideline quarterback and say move this person or not, but let's yep. just say it went right down the chain. Uh, it was good to see um, some of the backbench coming forward. Uh, my successor in New Lynn, Deborah Russell, goes to uh, chair of the Finance and Expenditure Committee. Uh, Michael Woods is coming up as Chief Whip. Uh, Priyanka Radhakrishnan as Ethnic Affairs Parliamentary Undersecretary, I believe. Uh, Potter Williams as a Minister Outside Cabinet. She's She's got a proven record uh, with the community and voluntary sector. So again, based on performance, people are allowed to go forward. And I think that's, uh, that's a pretty good signal to send to everybody else in the caucus. If you do the yards, if you get the practical results on the ground, uh, the system will recognise that and reward it. I think that ends, that's the incentive that every Prime Minister needs to send. So, what about Mecca Fai then? Too early to bring her back? Look, as I say, I don't want to play quarterback on individuals. Um, uh, the circumstances around Mecca, uh, you know, there are a range of views on that. I know okay, what about Claire Curran, just quickly? Person. You want to sit on look, the fence with Mecca Fai What about Claire Curran? Do you think look, she'll, she'll ever come back? I'm not going to play quarterback <laughs> on individuals. I think um, Mecca may have a uh, Mecca may be back in before Claire is. That's all I'll say. All right, thanks for joining us. That is David Cunliffe giving us his thoughts on the Prime Minister's reshuffle, formerly in Parliament, former leader of Labour himself, now a partner at Stakeholder Strategies in Auckland.